I got my BSI on and my scene is safe. Today we'll be talking about CPAP or continuous positive airway pressure. Now what is the goal of CPAP? It's to reduce the need for pre-hospital intubation. Now let's discuss some differences between CPAP and intubation. Intubation is a highly invasive procedure. There's a high mortality related to it. There's a potential for infection. It requires a high level of skill from an EMS provider. It may require sedation. It's a traumatic procedure and it is found to increase the length of stay in the hospital. CPAP is a non-invasive procedure. It is easily adjusted and discontinued. It is considered a BLS skill in most states so that an EMT basic can do this procedure. It is rare to have any complications. It does not require sedation and it is fairly comfortable. CPAP is indicated for pulmonary edema secondary to CHF or congestive heart failure, near drowning, pneumonia, and more and more research has been shown it has been useful for COPD and asthma. Contraindications for CPAP are respiratory arrest. Your patient needs to be breathing at an appropriate rate and depth to effectively use CPAP. They shouldn't have a decreased level of consciousness. If they have any trauma, such as a pneumothorax, CPAP is not indicated. And if your patient is actively vomiting. I have assessed my patient and determined he could really benefit from the use of CPAP. So, in my area we use this system, which is great because it only uses three pieces of simple equipment that attaches to our oxygen cylinder and regulator that we use for everyday operations. Now, before we start the procedure, we want to explain to the patient what to expect. They'll be receiving a mask that's going to fit a little bit snug against their face, but they'll be receiving 100% oxygen and it will help their breathing. So to start, we want to choose the appropriately sized mask, which we have already done. I'm going to take the oxygen tubing and connect it to the mask. Now it only goes one direction so that you know you're doing it right. On the mask, there are four plastic prongs which connect to the headband. And this will hold the mask in place on the patient's face. I'm going to go ahead and connect one side for easy application and I'm going to take the oxygen tubing and connect it to the regulator. Now I'm going to start out at 15 liters per minute but based on the patient's severity we can move it up to 25 if necessary. Now I'm going to ask the patient's help to hold the mask in place on their face where it's comfortable. And I'm going to wrap the rest of the band around to hold it in place. Okay, so looks like it's a pretty good fit. I'm just checking to see if I feel for any air leaks which I don't, and that's good. At this point, you want to monitor your patient. You want to see if they're tolerating the procedure, if they are perhaps improving with it or not improving. And because this is an unstable patient, you should be monitoring their vital signs every five minutes. And this includes lung sounds. So let's say the patient is not tolerating the procedure we need to remove CPAP. Very easy. You just stabilize the mask, unhook one side, and the mask easily comes off. And that is CPAP. Another benefit to the CPAP system is that this is an open system 
which means if your patient has vomited just a tiny bit, you can have a French catheter fit in here and you can suction without taking off the mask. Another exciting thing is that this CPAP comes with a nebulized medication portion, which connects really easy. Don't even have to remove the mask. I have my T-tubing ready. Disconnect the oxygen, connect the T-tubing, connect the oxygen, and the CPAP is continued. Next, I have my nebulized medication, which I will connect to the T-tubing. My second oxygen source will connect to the nebulized medication portion. Now it's important to note there are two oxygen sources here. This one is set at 15 to 25 liters, depending on the patient's severity. And this one is set at 6 liters per minute because the nebulized medication needs to get to the patient. And that is how you set up nebulized medication with CPAP. Um, it's very good. Our last piece is the headband which holds the mask in place. Okay, I remember now. Are you going to be able to hold back your yawns? I don't know. <laughs> Get your yawning over with. I will fill my nebulized medication, connect it to the T tubing. Take my other options. Are you snoring? 